1 plus 0 0.005 to the exponent n, which we don't know yet. All right. To solve this, we're going to notice that we're going to isolate this part so we can get to the, our n. And we have 16,000 divided by 8,000. So I'm going to write that so that you can see it. Here's the ratio. This is equal to 1.005, combining the 1 and the 0 0.005, to the n. And 16,000 divided by 8,000, that's 2. What's very interesting, this 2 is very much related to this double. And you can see, it looks like this amount is a ratio of the final compared to the initial. So this is 2, and this is 1.005 to the exponent n. And now let's use our algebra of logs to help us determine our n value. And so here we're going to take the log of both sides, log base, or sorry, log of 2 is equal to log of 1.005 to the exponent n. And noticing that we can use our power rule of logs here, that exponent in the argument can come down to become a coefficient. And so here pointing that, we get log 2 is equal to n times log of 1.005. Well, trying to isolate n here, n times this value is equal to log 2. So we can say n is equal to log 2 divided by log of 1.005. And we find out, here we can use a calculator and say log 2, close bracket, divided by a log of 1.005, close bracket, and we get 138.97. So n is equal to approximately 138.97, but rounded up, this is actually going to be 139. So if it's n is a value of 139, what does that mean? Well, when we're talking about n, we're talking about compounding periods. So this is 139 compounding periods. So here, let me just put this here. 139 compounding periods. And what is the compounding periods? It's 12 per year. So if we take 139 and divide by 12, we'll know the number of years. So 139 divided by 12. Well, let's see. It's going to be 12. And what's the closest number that 12, 139 goes? So 139 divided by 12 is 11.58. 11 times 12 is equal to 132. So how many more compounding periods? And these compounding periods equal the number of months, right? Remember, it's compounded monthly. So here, 11 times 12 is 132. And there's seven more. So we can say this is 11 years and seven months. That's how many years. Or we can say 11.58. 11.58 years for the number of years for her investment to double in value. Let's talk about borrowing money here. Now borrowing money is in a way the same thing as investing money, only the fact that if you're borrowing money, you're acting like the bank, you're using someone else's money and you have to pay them interest. And so if you're taking money from someone or the bank, then you have to pay them interest for using their money. So interest is charged for the use of that money for a certain fixed period of time. If the loan is paid off in one payment at the end of the loan period, then we can talk about the compound interest formula being used. If repayments are made on a regular basis during the period of the loan, the compound interest formula cannot be used because there's a payment and so then there's a different formula to use there. Here let's take a look at class example 6. We have Andrea who borrows 7 1500 from her parents to buy a new car. Her parents charge her interest at the rate of four my parents. Um, okay, parents want to make money. Not very much though. Her parents want to charge her interest at the rate of 4% per annum compounded quarterly. 
When she pays off the loan, she has to pay $785 interest. What is the length of the loan? Well, here, let's set it up again. Here we have A equaling something, P. These are the important pieces of that compound interest formula. And let's see if we can find in the question some important pieces of information. So here we have this 7,500. And that looks like our principal. We also have this 4%, which will help us to, and that's per atom. Let me just highlight that too, which will help us to find I. But here's an important note. It's compounded quarterly. So that is important because quarterly means four times a year. And that will be important. When she pays off the loan, she has to pay this amount. So that's also important. It means that this is the total amount of interest that was, was paid. And of course, in the end, we're going to have to find out what the length of the loan is. So if she had to pay $785 in interest, that can help us to find A. But let's find the easiest ones first. We know the principal here is $7,500. We can calculate I. I has to do with this 4%, which 4% is interpreted as 0 0.04, but that's not I. We have to make sure that we take into account how it's compounded. So I will be equal to this 0 0.04, the annual interest rate, divided by the number of times it's compounded in a year. And so here we have 0 0.04 divided by 4, this is equal to 0 0.01. And n is just n. We don't know what it is yet. But how can we find a? Well, the total amount a is going to be the original principal plus the interest that you had to pay. So this is p plus the total interest. So that's equal to your 7,500 plus your 785 which when you add that together is going to be 8,285. Okay, can we calculate our formula then? A is equal to P1 plus I to the N. And let's fill in our pieces of information. We have 8285, which is equal to our principal of 7,500 times 1 plus 0 0.01 to the exponent n. And here, to isolate n here, we're going to get this whole power. And so we're going to have to do 8285 divided by 7500 is equal to 1.01 .01 to the exponent n. Now when we continue that, we will have to use the log of both sides. So the log of 8285 7,500, which again is a ratio of the final divided by the initial, is equal to the log of 1.01 .01 to the exponent n. And we know from a familiar law of logarithms, the exponent in the argument can come down to become a coefficient. So we have log of 8285 over 7,500 is equal to n log of 1.01. .01. Now isolating this n, n times this expression is equal to this. So n is equal to this whole thing, log of 8285 divided by 7500. And that's divided by log of 1.01. .01. When we find this out, we put this into our calculator. This is quite complicated. Let's see what we can try. Here we have, opening the brackets for the whole top, we have log of 8285 divided by 7500. Close the bracket. Close the bracket of the log. Close the bracket of the top. Divided by log of 1.01. .01. Close the bracket and enter and we get 10.00. Okay, so n, we find out n is equal to 10. This is compounding periods, right? 
but this compounding periods are actually quarters quarters of a year so how long is it in years then what is the length of the loan 10 compounding quarters or 10 compounding periods so 10 quarters 10 divided by 4 is equal to 2.5 so we can say then the length of time is two and a half years two and a half years for this loan all right so you're ready for your assignment and i will see you in class